What's up Chicago? I am the Bull Lifer himself, the one they call Wise Black, and you are now tuning into the Bull Lifer podcast where I bring you nothing but the latest and greatest news on our beloved Chicago Bulls. Last time we spoke, the Chicago Bulls were two and two, and at this point in the season, they are now four and four. So I just want to give a few topics as to how the Bulls have fared since we last spoke. Stay tuned. First standouts that I saw in the game versus the Indiana Pacers was solid team ball. The Chicago Bulls success came from the team moving the basketball around. The team had a total of 34 assists out there, plus their three point shooting was pretty much stellar at 53.3% and hitting 16 out of their 30 shots, just absolutely bonkers. But not only that, Zach Levine absolutely went off in that game. Zach had a total of 28 points, five assists, and six six rebounds. The Bulls just completely handled the Indiana Pacers. Now, it didn't look great the entire game because, yes, while the Bulls pretty much handled the Pacers, they still allowed them to come back down from about 24 points to get the game within to single digits. So that gave us a bit of a scare, and that's something that the Bulls have to correct. They can't allow, especially these teams that are considered to be lesser than the rebuilding teams with a bunch of young guys, they kind of took their foot off the pedal and allowed the Indiana Pacers to get some life and the reason I don't like that is because you want to completely demoralize teams you don't want to allow them to get hope and give them the even the thought of even getting back into the game so that's one thing that I would say that the Bulls have to correct if they really want to be an elite team but let's get to the next game versus the San Antonio Spurs the Chicago Bulls did not look great at all this was a game that I thought that they should have handled just manhandled the Spurs and given the fact that the Spurs pretty much don't have any stars on this team. They have a bunch of role players at this point. While yes, they do have some up and coming players like Jakob Pertl who just absolutely obliterated Vooch. That was, man, that, that really <laughs> it really killed me to see how badly and how poorly Vucevic played in this game because he just got out rebounded, out scored, out defended. He just looked completely horrible in that game versus the Spurs and there, there was no answer for Jakob Pertl out there because when I looked at how the Spurs were shooting from deep, they shot what, 16 of 38 from deep. Uh, they had 37 assists and yeah, Vooch was just completely ice cold. That what That is what really stood out in this game and I guess they just called the Chicago Bulls slipping. I don't know if the Bulls thought like how I thought and that this should have just been a cakewalk of a game given the fact that as I said the Spurs don't really have anyone to mention. They traded away Javante Murray. They they pretty much don't have anybody to kill out there outside of rookies and I mean that's exactly what happened so this was definitely a game that the Chicago Bulls are gonna miss that they know that they shouldn't have lost but it is what it is not a very good game from Vooch. Moving on to the game versus the Sixers. Hands down, no Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond was not there and that is what really stood out in this game because when I looked at the bench, they had very low production total. The bench, the bench had 24 points, not good, not horrible. I mean, it was just mediocre. I feel like we should have, normally we get more production out of the bench. Also, not to mention the fact that the Bulls bench in its entirety only had 10 rebounds as well. That's another showing of how much the Chicago Bulls miss Andre Drummond and as to a reason why they took an L. But also going back to perimeter defense, the Chicago Bulls have pretty much no perimeter defense because going back to how it looked in that Cleveland game where Kevin Love was just shooting pretty much all over the floor. He got to shoot any shot he wanted wide open. There was nobody within 10 feet of him pretty much the whole night and that's exactly how it looked in this game versus the 76ers. Like their perimeter defense is just non-existent. The, the 76ers shot 48% from deep on 14 of 29 three-point shots attempted. So that's a really a big issue for the Chicago Bulls because it's not even like Joel and B or James Harden necessarily got off versus them. And why, yes, they were still their stellar selves as players, but I really think if 
we had Andre Drummond. The insertion of Andre Drummond would have definitely made the difference in this game because it wasn't that huge of a scoring discrepancy out there. I just think that we lacked that size. We lacked somebody to come in whenever Vooch was sitting on the, on the bench because Vooch actually did play a really solid game out there. But whenever Vooch was sitting on the bench, they put in uh, uh, DJJ. And come on, man, he's 6'5", trying to... Uh, guard Joel Embiid out there we can all just envision how that's gonna take place right even before the game so that was pretty much the issue but I did like how the Bulls looked out there pretty much overall versus the 76ers because prior to uh, that game the Bulls would just get completely annihilated by the 76ers and Joel Embiid so it didn't look that bad given the fact that I know if we had Drummond out there I think it would have looked a bit differently now last but not least the game versus the Brooklyn Nets. Standouts for me in this game was more so toward the end of the game and granted I'll be honest I, I didn't get to watch the full game so I pretty much saw saw most of it toward the second half but nonetheless I still got the gist of what the of what took place in this game and the standouts really were Ayo Desumu that sparked from Ayo Desumu in the fourth quarter because before that a lot of the guys are pretty much just all over the place it was a shootout out there because they were allowing Kevin Durant to just pretty much do whatever he wanted uh Kyrie or Irvin he looked to be man he, he's going through a whole lot of mental issues and that actually fared very well for the Bulls because had Kyrie been in his right state of mind I think that this could have gone an entirely different way but the entire night Kyrie Irvin was I mean he was with us Kyrie Irvin was with us in yesterday's game so that really helped the Bulls out as well but not only that three-point shooting from Goran Dragic. He came in, he knocked down a bunch of clutch three-point shots for the Bulls as well. And last but definitely not least, Zach Levine. Zach Levine just exploded. Zach exploded from deep and in the fourth quarter itself, Zach Levine had 20 points to just seal the deal for the Chicago Bulls. So that was amazing from Zach. But I will say I did not like how the Bulls were just allowing them to stay close in this game. I think this was a game where the Chicago Bulls had the opportunity to just put the Nets away like the Nets did us last year where they just ran us off of our floor in, in Chicago. They, uh, they blew us out by like 30 points. This was a game where the Chicago Bulls should have done that to the Nets because no Ben Simmons. Kyrie Irving was a shell of himself. He was not all there. Kevin Durant, he was solid, but he still was missing bunnies as well. He missed a few open shots, so he wasn't there either, right? Nonetheless, we got the W. That's what counted. But that win, I, I give it all to Zach Levine because he just absolutely went bonkers. What has made the team successful and what has been the team's downfall? I think what has been working for the Bulls is staggering Zach Levine's minutes with the second unit, allowing Alex Caruso to play more, more minutes with the first unit, giving the first unit more defense and the second unit more scoring power. Uh, I think that Billy Donovan has found something with that and I wouldn't be mad if they continue to do so because when it comes to the second unit, well, yes, we do have the insertions of uh, Dragic and Andre Drummond who are looking very very good for us. Nonetheless, I still think that it doesn't have enough scoring punch off of our bench and that's exactly corrected by Zach Levine running with those guys pretty much most of the time. So that is really working for us. So I thought that that was really good coaching on the part of Billy Donovan. Next thing that's working for us is pretty much the efficiency of DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan scoring pretty much. I mean, he's keeping us in a lot of games. He's allowing us to be able to stick in games where we would probably otherwise be down quite a bit versus the better teams in the league like the Phillies, uh, like Miami, that game versus Miami where he's just going off for 30 point games, you know, pretty much every other night. DeMar DeRozan is picking up where he left off from last year and that is nothing to, to, to sniff at because a lot of people were saying that can he continue what he did last season, right? And I was even one who was questioning it a bit because now DeMar is what 33 34 so 
people were pretty much just expecting DeMar to tell off a little bit, but he hasn't. DeMar is still just as clutch as he was last year, and he's got that mid-range game just down packed. That old man game is in the flesh when it comes to DeMar DeRozan and he has perfected it. Last thing that I would say is very successful in working for the Chicago Bulls is the bench's cohesiveness between Dragic and Andre Drummond. That has definitely been uh, a godsend for the Bulls coming off of the bench because I think prior to them coming here last season, who do we really have to name off of the bench? You talk about uh, uh, Bradley or <laughs> I mean, it was pretty much just tragic. So now having two legitimate uh, rotational pieces in Dragic and Drummond has obviously boasted the Chicago Bulls bench and now we have two guys out there who are pretty much uh, very serviceable. I think one of them actually could start on a few different teams and Andre Drummond. So I think that is really what has been working for the Chicago Bulls and if they can keep this up, I only see them, them getting better and better just in terms of the cohesiveness and that continuity that uh, the Bulls front office has been talking about so much. But now let's get to the downfall of the Chicago Bulls. The lack of perimeter defense. That three point shooting that they're allowing is not going to work in the long haul because if they continue to let teams just be wide open from deep, they're going to lose more games than they win. That's just how this works. This is the issue. The Chicago Bulls are playing zone on defense. And when it comes to the zone, nobody has a specific man so that's what's allowing these shooters to be so wide open when you look at how they were guarding the nets yesterday you, as you saw they was pretty much trapping kd every time he got the ball and while this can work for certain teams like it did yesterday it's not going to work for many others you're always leaving somebody open and that's why the bulls are always late getting out to shooters poor and sluggish first quarter starts the bulls are one of the worst first quarter defensive teams. Like I was listening to uh, Casey Johnson and Rob Schaefer talking about this just as far as um, the Bulls ranking as far as first quarter teams in, in terms of defense and they're worse than the league right now. So getting that, having that poor start in the first quarter is just really hurting the Chicago Bulls. Now, while yes, as the game does go on, the Bulls get a bit better, but still, who wants to start off sluggish? Who wants to start off in last place? Because it doesn't help you just in terms of your motivation. It doesn't help you in terms of your energy, right? You wanna start off good and end the game good. And that's what the Chicago Bulls are feeling to do. And that leads me into my next point. I think that their next downfall the thing that is also holding the team back is starting Patrick Williams over a guy like Javante Green Patrick Williams pretty much he he doesn't give you very much in the starting lineup looking at what he did in the game versus the 76 is he put up nine points and three rebounds in 32 minutes I mean that that just can't happen that that's not enough nowhere near and he has a number of games where he has notched over 25 plus minutes and he's giving you single digit scoring but not only that part of it Patrick Williams also does not defend well either so people can throw that out of the window because when I look at Patrick Williams out there a lot of times he's getting left on skates Patrick Williams cannot guard anybody either really I mean at, at least if it's one of those guys out there who is you know uh, a decent NBA player they don't even necessarily have to be a star but a lot of times when I'm watching Patrick Williams defend he's getting left he's behind his opponent a lot of the times not to mention the fact that his uh, rim defense isn't great either like he's six foot seven and almost what 220 pounds but he plays like he's about half that size how he allows guys to get around him and just score on him and under the basket as well because a lot of times he isn't there a few times he has had some like come behind blocks or whatnot but it's not consistent enough patrick williams just fails to really be there when it counts so it seems the opposite in javante green is energy 
Javante Green gives this team energy. He is very, very noticeable when he's out there on the floor, unlike Patrick Williams, because when he's out there, he's making sure that he's affecting the game in so many other ways, whether it's crashing the boards, whether it's slashing, whether it's uh, playing nice defense on, on some player or something, like uh, whether it's hitting a corner three. Javante Green is just always there, and he's actually not necessarily getting in the way of the offense either. Patrick Williams doesn't necessarily get in the way. He gets out of the way. But when it comes to Javante Green, he's more so making himself useful because he's getting open. And I would much rather that as opposed to a guy who hides when he's on the floor like Patrick Williams tends to do. Last downfall for the Chicago Bulls is their lack of positional rebounding at the four spot. Again, this goes back to Patrick Williams. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to bag on him, but I'm just talking about what I see out there. Our second chance points are too low. Yes, even with guys like Andre Drummond and Nikola Vucevic, our second chance points could be that much higher if we had a real power forward out there. And fine, if Patrick Williams isn't going to do it, we still need to bring someone else in and at the four position who can actually play the four. I have campaigned for LaMarcus Aldridge. I think he would be really, really solid because last year for the Brooklyn Nets, he played very, he gave them very good minutes. Uh, had 12.7 points per game and he grabbed about six rebounds per game as well and about 48 games for him. He's not somebody who you would play every game. He'd be a piece that you want to use for the playoffs. So that's what I think that the Chicago Bulls should go with. Or even a guy like like Drake, Jay Crowder out there. I mean, I wouldn't give up a first round pick or anything like that for him, but they need to go and see if they can get Jay Crowder from home because he's not being used at all over there in Phoenix. And I think he'd be a lot more active and productive of a player than a guy like Patrick Williams. So uh, these are things that just really stand out to me when it comes to the Bulls. And I think that they're all very correctable. And I'm, I'm sorry for this glare. I can't seem to get away from this sun. It's all in my face. So this I don't know, my bad. But anyway, that's enough of my rambling, guys. I really appreciate that you guys checked in with me. Do not forget to get up with me on social at Radical underscore creator. And don't forget to check out myself and Marcus over on the Bulls podcast. You, I'll put the link in the description to our YouTube channel and also uh, on Apple Podcasts as well. So until next time, guys. Always remember. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to get this video a like, y'all. Please get this video a like. I want to get in tune with more Bulls fans like ourselves. So please put a thumbs up on this video if I gave you any semblance of a good video. All right, <laughs> but that's uh, that. But that's my time, y'all. Peace and love.